Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here and in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video We're gonna be trying an interesting experiment with the new undead nightmare zombies that have shown up in RDR 2 uh, To get you guys caught up in case you have no idea what I'm talking about ever since the frontier pursuits update that happened in Red Dead Online about a week and a half ago these dead characters in game single player and multiplayer have been showing up with these bright glowing green eyes like super weird stuff and they didn't used to be this way before and we've also seen a ton of other weird occurrences as well like strange music and spooky haunting sounds and we've also seen other characters and even animals like dogs have like these crazy red eyes too Things just don't seem to make sense. And so a lot of people believe that these characters are the first hint and clue or maybe even a teaser for some like undead nightmare-esque content that either could arrive in Red Dead Online or in single player. And one of the most frequent requests that I've gotten from the couple of videos that I've made so far is that I should try some fun experiments with these zombies. And so I was starting to think, you know, what would be an interesting thing I could do with them? Uh, maybe a place that I could take them that might give us some other hint or clue. And the first place that popped in my head was the Pagan Ritual Site. Now, in the comments of this video, you can, number one, let me know what you think uh, about the results of our experiment, which, of course, we'll get to at the end. But also, number two, what are some other locations that you think we should take these undead nightmare zombies? So today we're going to be looking at the Pagan Ritual site. I thought about taking them to that Butcher's Creek like pentagram, the thing that happens at like 4 or 5 a.m., but it's actually harder to see their glowing green eyes at night, believe it or not, than it is during the day, so I thought that might not be a great idea. I also thought about the Indian burial site. You guys can let me know some other suggestions you might have in the comments down below. So by now, I'm sure you guys are also aware of the strange and spooky things that happen at the Pagan Ritual site because you might be wondering why would we be choosing a location like this? Well, the Pagan Ritual site has caused a lot of crazy things to happen, like corpses reanimating themselves as zombies, corpses literally turning into like these mummified versions of themselves after a couple of days, some pretty spooky and mysterious stuff happening there. So that's why I wanted to choose this location first, because I felt like it would have been a good starting ground to see if something unique or crazy would ultimately happen. And one of you guys also pointed this out to me the other day, that it looks like only female characters have the glowing green eyes. And just from the very brief encounters that I have noticed, I think that that's correct. So I don't know if it's something about the female character that specifically causes those green eyes, but for this instance, I just grabbed some lady from Armadillo, and we are going to head to the Pagan Ritual site. So we're at the Pagan Ritual site now, and one of the things I want you guys to keep track of or notice is where specifically we place the bodies, because that's gonna be important a little bit later on. And I use the word bodies, plural, specifically. You'll see what I'm gonna do in a little bit. So I ended up putting down the body, and you guys can see where she is and how she is. If we were looking at the Pagan Ritual site like a clock, she would be at 6 o'clock and she would be facing up uh, with her feet facing the north and her head facing sort of the southwest. So again, that is going to be important. And I also haven't done anything else at the Pagan Ritual site. In fact, the only thing I did was inspect it since it's one of the places that Arthur or John can actually write down in their journal. And I don't think that has any impact on the experiment the only other thing I did was take the Valerian root uh, from the little like stone hedge back there. And other than that, basically what I did is I just waited. I wanted to see if any amount of time would elapse would something unique or interesting or spooky ultimately occur here. So I slept for as long as I could, which actually took us to nighttime. And when we arrived, I noticed that something was a little bit different. Notice the position of her body. Uh, she has faced the completely different direction. Now her head is sort of facing 3 o'clock and her feet are sort of facing 9 o'clock. And she almost looks like she's been turned into a more mummified version of herself. So how would something like this happen? She's clearly dead. She isn't just going to like roll around in her sleep like a normal person would. So how did something like this occur? 
And she also still has the bright, glowing green eyes as well, even after uh, 24 hours has elapsed. So I found that to be really spooky. And I wanted to sort of accelerate this experiment a little bit. So what I ended up doing next was actually removing the mask from the pagan ritual site, the pagan skull mask. I actually took that off the guy who's like impaled on the spike just to see if that would have any impact on what we were doing. Now, after that happened, I went back to camp for a little bit and then I ended up sleeping for the maximum amount of time. And that brought us to day number three. And when I arrived, I don't know if this is supposed to happen, but a pack of wolves were there and they started attacking me. I think this might just be an area where wolves hang out. I don't think it's necessarily associated with the pagan ritual site, but regardless, that was kind of interesting. And something spooky happened again. This time, instead of the body of the undead nightmare zombie moving, the body of the guy on the spike, he is like completely out of the circle. Again, if we were to take a look at this like the face of a clock, he's basically a little bit past midnight, almost completely out of the circle. How did he go from impaled on the spike to off the spike and out of the ritual site? Uh, that is a little bit weird right there. So I threw our friend back down inside of the circle and I wanted to see if he would move if we ended up sleeping again. So that's exactly what I did. And when I ended up coming back to the pagan ritual site, sure enough, his body was moved once again. So someone, something, or somehow these bodies are getting moved. And that is pretty spooky. I had actually never seen this happen before. So this time what I did is I ended up moving both of the bodies. I wanted to see if I put them down in separate locations, if I had returned, would both of the bodies end up being moved? So I placed them down in different spots. I slept and when I returned back to the pagan ritual site, sure enough, both the bodies had been moved. And this time there was a bunch of rats like squirming around the couple of bodies. But the one thing I had noticed so far is aside from that weird half torso impaled guy moving, the body of the undead nightmare zombie lady was not like decaying. She was just sort of staying in her normal state, which I found to be weird because by now we would have expected to see that she would ultimately start like weathering and decaying like a normal body should. So because of that, this made me want to try some more experiments. Could I actually get the glowing green eyes of the undead nightmare zombie to go away? So I thought, okay, what would be some fun experiments? Let's throw a fire bottle onto the pagan ritual site. Did that have an impact on our lady other than getting a little bit crispier? The answer is no. Those glowing green eyes still there. So I thought, okay, how could we do this next? We put down four sticks of dynamite around the entire ritual site. We blew it up. Nope, the glowing green eyes are still there. And another thing that's so incredibly weird about these undead nightmare zombies is they don't seem to get dismembered like other NPCs. So for example, if you were to take an NPC, kill them, and then pull out your shotgun, you could blow their head off or their arms or their legs. You know, Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the gorier games that Rockstar has come out with recently. These NPCs don't seem to function the same way. They seem to remain intact no matter how much abuse you give them. So has Rockstar sort of given them a special property because they're going to be used later on? Who really knows? That's why I said that some really mysterious stuff happened here, not only with the bodies being moved, but also the way that they functioned. Now, as I was editing this video, when I came back a couple of days later in game, or when I actually went to my camp, slept, and then returned to the ritual site, uh, everything was gone. So I don't know if too many days just elapsed. I don't know if the bodies just like dissolved. I left my PlayStation on for like two hours. And when I came back, that's what happened. So that's kind of the conclusion of this saga. What that potentially means is anyone's guess, but it was kind of a mysterious ending, let's just say that. So what are my final thoughts on this? As far as the bodies moving, I think that's kind of spooky. And I don't know if it's the game just not remembering where I had placed them down. I mean, it's not like my camp was in another state. It was, you know, as close as you could get. I just, you know, pitched my tent super close to the pagan ritual site and I would sleep and I would return there instantly. So I don't know why they might be moving, who might be moving them, how could they be moving, 
That's a little bit weird to me. Probably the most interesting part of this experiment. But also the second part, I don't think this really has anything to do with the pagan ritual site, but since they were here, I tested them. The fact that these NPCs can't be destroyed uh, like normal NPCs, that is weird to me. It's almost like Rockstar has a separate plan for them altogether. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below, again, on everything we discussed in this video. But also, what are some other experiments you would like us to do with these undead nightmare zombies in the future? You can let us know in the comments down below, or better yet, you can reach out to me on my Facebook page. I'll have a link to that in the description. You can drop me a line, photo, or video over there. If you did go on to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And remember to subscribe if you guys are new, you want to stay up to date on all the latest Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA videos that I'm doing here on the channel. And be sure to ring that notification bell as well. Sometimes YouTube just doesn't work, and if you ring that bell, you'll always be guaranteed to be notified when new videos arrive. But of course, as always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.